Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in to today's Spur video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's Spur video. Day 10 will take us to the 15th of February and we'll be able to extend out beyond that with the extended GFS and ECM ensembles. Very much around a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at the CFSB2 at the end of the video for the next four weeks. That will get us into the beginning of March. And I should get on with that for you in a moment. <laughs> Just to say that first video to say was 6 a.m. upload. And we've also released the fifth update for spring. So please check out those two videos if you'd like to do that. Like, share, subscribe on this. Thank you so much for both doing that. It's going to be a lovely Sunday. Um, right, let's start in the stratosphere there. Bring up date more latest stratospheric development. So temperatures at 10 HPA are moving downwards now. Uh, so we have the minor warming of the stratosphere in the uh, past week. Got the temperature up to around minus 30. Like that at 10 HPA. We're now closer to average. So we've dropped down with the black line temporarily. That will, <coughs> oh, here he goes. That will start to lift up again. Uh, in a few days time or about that in a second going a bit low down to 30 HPA They're actually got a little bit colder than average now slightly under the grey line uh, Very close to minus 17 So let's have a look at the latest 2 GFS stratospheric uh, forecast for 10 HPA from the uh, midnight run and the 6th Z Starting off with the midnight run um, Now you see where these blue colours are pushing back towards me uh, North Pole, that's the polar vortex, which has been displaced, of course, trying to get back to where you'd expect it to be, which is over the top of the pole in the stratosphere. Uh, that's going to carry on for the next week or so, as we get to around the 13th of February, another warming begins to start uh, again going over Siberia there, and uh, that intensifies a lot as we get to the middle of February, so around just after day 10. Uh, that's becoming quite a significant warming and moving into the uh, North Pole as well. Again, another displacement event of the polar vortex. This time displaced more towards the North Atlantic and North America, uh, perhaps. And then the polar vortex just kind of disappears a little bit <laughs> by the time we get through 21st of February. It's still there um, in the strategy, but obviously uh, a lot weakened. Looks like it's virtually about to split there, doesn't it? And, you know, comes a significant warming over the top. Of the pole itself. That's probably enough to send us out of him into reverse. GFS 6Z looks like that. Uh, again, much of a much is with those blue code displaced. Stratospheric polar vortex displaced over the uh, next week. Another warming begins to gather pace over Siberia around 13th of February. Um, and that one pushing into uh, the pole as well. So, again, quite a significant warming uh, there, displacing the polar vortex um, into the North Atlantic and into North America. It looks like it's virtually split there, doesn't it? Virtually split by 20th of uh, February. Uh, although still there, sort of over top of the UK and Ireland, though still more or less in business by 21st of February. Uh, this is how the zone of wind forecast is looking within the GFS ensemble. So at the moment, the zone of wind is a little bit stronger than average just here. I can carry on for a few more days. <coughs> Excuse me. And then all members of the GFS ensemble go for a significant weakening of the zone of winds. Um, with this next warming around the middle of February, some of them, many of them, actually send the zone of wind into reverse, going underneath that zero line. Um, no, a lot of those on some members are reversing zona wings at 10 HPA, which would then, you know, be a classic and, and, and proper uh, official sudden stratospheric warming. Uh, what impacts that has on the troposphere, if any, um, we, we won't know until uh, sort of end of February, early March probably, so we shall keep you posted. And we'll keep monitoring, of course. Sending temperature is uh, sitting at 8.3. That's 4.5 degrees above average. That's provisional to the uh, 4th February. That's beginning to start uh, ticking down. And that will tick down further over the uh, next few days. Um, got some cold nights to come. Plenty of frosty nights over the next two, three, four nights. So uh, that will drop down probably into the sixes, I would have thought, uh, by uh, sort of midweek. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles that go away from Northampton today. Red line is the third year upper air temperature average for Northampton, starting off above average with the upper air temperatures at the moment. They're going to drop a little bit as we get through um, towards the end of next week, and then they'll pick up again 
are going to be the sort of middle part of Fed Green. Then quite close to average, uh, to be honest. You will notice that the uh, green line, which is the GFS operation run, does become a bit of a mild outlier at uh, the, the latter stage or in the latter stages. But then a lot of the ensemble members are going quite mild in that period as well. So it looks rather so, it looks rather up and down and nothing overly dramatic going on. Uh, there, uh, precipitation wise going to be lots of dry weather up to around the middle of February, but maybe a little bit more unsettled after that. Temperature anomalies from the 5th to the 13th February going to be a little bit cold now for England and Wales, a little bit mild average for Scotland and also for Ireland. And uh, precipitation anomalies going to be drier than normal. The latest from that from Earth, nullschool.net shows that we're under high pressure Today, we're high and dry on this Sunday afternoon. UK Met Euro for at midnight on Wednesday still has us under high pressure. There'll be more frost, uh, maybe some freezing fog in the south, a little bit milder further north and west. And then through the second half of next week, um, we keep the high pressure going in the south. It probably keeps frosty weather uh, going down there. Meanwhile, further north west, it will be a little bit milder. Get through to uh, the coming weekend, and then we're all into a milder southwesterly. So uh, we should start turning milder even down in the south uh, next weekend, I think. Icon looks like again, and again, a lot of dry weather. Uh, you know, a lot of dry weather in the south. A little bit more unsettled though. Both southwesterly winds further north. Icon again with high pressure dominating on Wednesday. High pressure still in control in the south through Thursday, Friday. Probably gets frosty there, a little bit milder further north and west. <coughs> Excuse me, as well. And then into the weekend, I think we all start uh, getting this milder weather through. So the north is mild anyway, but the south, I think, start turning milder next weekend with those southwesterly winds setting in. Although it's not that far away from being able to keep frost going uh, down in the south. As far as we get to, if I got to midday next Sunday, where we've got high pressure over northern France into southern England, might keep frost going down in the south, but certainly central northern areas are a lot milder, and most places are still looking pretty dry. GFS midnight run, again, looking high pressure dominating on Wednesday, and then into Thursday and Friday, high pressure goes on in the south, could keep frost risk going there, meanwhile, third north, it should be milder with southwesterly uh, winds. That's how we look as we get towards day 10. So, what still high pressure goes on in the south. Uh, I don't think by then it's reasonably mild in the south, but, you know, that was going to be in the detail with this, how much of this mild air from the north we get down into southern counties. Certainly northern regions look milder. Uh, and then as we go to, into the second half of February, it turns more unsettled. Not desperately so, but it starts bringing some bouts of rain into the north and west. In the south, though, the high pressure fest continues. GFS 6Z, um, again, very dry, high pressure dominated through the middle part of next week. High pressure carries on into the end week and weekend. Again, that could still be delivering frost down in the south, but north, and it's likely to be quite a bit milder. Uh, heading up towards day 10, actually pulls in a little bit of a northerly on the GFS 6Z. Uh, so a little bit of a northerly trying to get going there around day 10. That probably just keeps the frost risk going under the area of high pressure, really. Even into the second half of the month. Right at the very end, signs of weather becoming more unsettled with low pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. And it's trying to get some high pressure going up towards Scandinavia uh, as well. If you enjoyed the video, please can you like, share, subscribe. It's a show to everybody uh, to do that. We need to put on around 15 subscribers now. That's all to get ourselves to 15.5k. Uh, so thank you so much, everybody, for getting us this far. Please tell friends about to subscribe. And uh, let's get to 15.5k as soon as we can. Thank you so much. GM, again, brings lots of high pressure in through the middle part of next week. There will be some showery conditions up north. Probably not getting much rain, though, down into the south. Um, next weekend, probably milder in most areas. So far south, south east could still be reasonably cold with the area of high pressure so close by. But I think most places probably milder by next weekend. And then GM turns very unsettled around days 8 and 9 10 deep road pressure coming in. I think that's it bringing heavy rain, gale force winds. That's uh, rather different to most of the other model output uh, that we've seen so far. ECM, uh, finally with high pressure in control through much of the coming uh, week. Uh, we'll get through the weekend. You know, the South might still be hanging on to frost, but I think ECM's a little bit milder than most of the other model output. With those southwesterly winds bringing milder air down into the south. The north is milder uh, in any case. And then, similar to the GM actually, the ECM also turns really quite unsettled around eight, days 8, 9, 10, 
low pressure being wet windy and quite cold weathering from the uh, North Atlantic. So we're going to do a little bit of cold zonality there by day 10. This is a precipitation forecast based on that ECM run from tomatoshow.com. Again, the emphasis is on dry weather over the next few days. What rain is particularly in the north and west. Very little getting down to the south and the southeast until around days 9, 10. Main signs that things are turning a little bit more unsettled then. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10 from the Icelandic Met Office. Gets us to the 15th of February. 13 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure to our north and west, high pressure to our south and east. So that's turning more unsettled. We've got eight, including the operational run, with deep low pressure over to the west of the country. So very unsettled, of course, about another eight again with low pressure really in control there. Uh, we've got another eight down here with high pressure just to the north of France, low pressure to the north of, just south of France, I should say, low pressure north of Scotland. And that brings in like uh, a westerly type flow. Another eight, again, very similar, but a little, a little bit further north with the high pressure. Um, no, that's a little bit more settled. And then six with high pressure to the north of Scotland, which will bring in probably quite a cold easterly uh, type flow. So it's 50 50 whether it's unsettled or settled actually at day 10. There's a lot of uncertainty uh, how quickly the high pressure breaks down, I think. And then to it time, this is the option map we've got. Only one gets us to the 20th of February. 51 out of 51 members of the ECL ensembles, all of them with low pressure in control. So looking quite unsettled with uh, low pressure in from off the Atlantic. CFSB2, finally, and then we're done. These are 500 millibar high to orange, break it down into weekly periods. The first week period will take us from the 5th to the 11th of February. The coming week is going to be dominated by high pressure. It's going to bring lots of dry weather and uh, certainly must have plenty of overnight frost. Week 2 shows quite a big change. It's the 12th to the 18th of February. The low pressure breaks through. There's a high pressure sort of splits in two, some going out into the Atlantic, some over to Eastern Europe. Obviously, that's going to be much more unsettled with uh, bouts of rain and whatnot. And whatnot. <laughs> and uh, week three will be the 19th to the 25th of February again, with low pressure dominating very really unsettled them. Week four just seems to get something a bit colder. This is the 26th of February to the 4th of March, that low pressure. Looks like it's going more towards the south, some higher pressure in the Atlantic and maybe up towards Iceland. Uh, so end of February, beginning of March, might, looks unsettled, but might also start to turn colder. Maybe we start thinking about something a bit wintry <laughs> as we go into the beginning of meteorological spring. Could that be in response to the strap warming? Um, you know, would be the right sort of time frame. No, so maybe. Uh, maybe, 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 but it's four weeks away, so it's a long way off. Right, we're done. If you enjoyed the video, please do like, share, and subscribe. Thank you so much, everybody, for doing that. And uh, why not drop a comment and let us know what you think about this and all of our videos. We thank you so much, everybody, uh, for doing that for us. Just so coming up tomorrow, so yeah, 6 a.m. upload, we'll have uh, a 10 to 14 day video update and we'll be live streaming. Live streams are back uh, at uh, 6 uh, to 8 p.m. 8 p.m. tomorrow. So uh, I shall see you live at 8 p.m. But before that, there will be a couple of videos. So enjoy the rest of your Sunday. And for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.